right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing oh so well and welcome to today's video which is on whether Chelsea should go big in the summer, spend all that cash they've got saved up on a big Galactico name to try and help the marketing, the branding, inject some superstar talent or would this be a bad detrimental thing? The two names that come up and will be discussed in this video today are Gareth Bale and Neymar Jr. Both have been recently linked and both are of course very, very talented players. One being a proven talent in the Premier League but a bit older than Gareth Bale. And one generally being a Galactico level quality player in Neymar but comes with a whole bunch of problems. Both of them do really. I'm going to get into all of that in today's video. But a quick reminder to all you lot to subscribe to Football Therapy because I do upload every single day and I don't want you lot to miss out on any content. So subscribe and make sure you do hit that bell notifications icon. And if you want to help a brother out, please do like this video. Thank you very much. All right, let's get into it. And you know what? Let's start with Gareth Bale. Bale's been a huge talking point at Real Madrid for a while now. Obviously a superstar player. He's actually been very, very good for Real Madrid over the last few years, but is underappreciated by the fans. In my opinion, he's been treated really, really poorly by Zinedine Zidane, especially if you consider how well he's performed for the for Real, essentially like scoring overhead kicks in finals, you know, winning Champions League, scoring a bunch of goals. Sure, he's been out injured a lot, but it's not really his fault. By all accounts, he trains very, very hard and has a very professional application to his work in Madrid. To the point that it's actually been at his detriment at times. Like when his teammates would be going out to the, eat food really late, he'd want to go home and go to sleep early because he wants to stay healthy and in good shape. There's nothing wrong with being a healthy professional, but the culture out there demands that you go out drinking late with your teammates. And in a way, he was shunned out of the group. They called him the golfer because he plays a lot of golf. But again, you know, as long as you're being professional and going to training every day and playing really well, it's good to have hobbies outside football or something like golf. It's probably healthy. It actually helps your game in many ways to sort of distribute, you know, your skill set and other things and bring it back to football. Anyway, Bale was something of an outcast to Real Madrid, regardless of the amount of goals and stuff he scored. The fans underappreciate him. The coach was, you know out of order to him in many ways, although he has been brought back into the team this season because needs must really. Zidane wanted him out at all costs, he's like yeah we want him gone, we want him gone, but now he's being forced to play him due to injuries and stuff. And really, Ed Hazard and uh, Gareth Bale are the two main men, but you know what, he'd probably still be very keen to get rid of him, get him off the wage bill, and I think at this point now Bale will probably feel that he can prove himself one more time of this season in Madrid and then get another big contract move for his sort of swan song, I guess, at the top level. Now, loads of names have been banded around. One that hasn't gone away is Manchester United, purely because they've got a lot of money. But really, buying Gareth Bale would be just doing what they've constantly done the last few years, buying big brand marketing names, and it hasn't really helped them with their ethos. They're trying to buy young now and rebuild a philosophy, and Gareth Bell would go against that. Obviously, there's a sensational return to Tottenham Hotspur on the cards, but is it something they need? And they don't like paying their players a lot of money anyway, and he would demand a lot of money. So I'm not really sure I can see that happening. Chelsea have been linked a couple of times, and again recently. Basically, if a buyer comes in for Bale, generally I think they'll be keen to offload him. They know Chelsea has got a lot of money. Like I said in previous videos, when I did a video about Jadon Sancho probably wanting to come to Chelsea had he been given the chance, or if he's given the chance. Chelsea have the Eden Hazard sale money, they have the Alvaro Morata sale money, and they have saved up revenue from finishing third in the Premier League, winning the Europa League, etc. A lot of cash that they couldn't spend because of the transfer embargo. So, if they wanted, Chelsea could buy Gareth Bale, but also Real Madrid, sorry I love saying it like that, they really want N'Golo Kante, surprise, surprise. So there's been a new news headline slash rumor that they will be willing to offer Chelsea 70 million euros plus Gareth Bale for N'Golo Kante. Now that's actually quite a lot. For the level of player Gareth Bale is, I know he comes with a huge uh, you know, wage bill, whatever, which is 
a difficult thing to pay off and I don't think we could be going for a wage you know deduction or cut so he had to pay a lot of money to keep Gareth Bell but he's worth 60 million maybe 50 million due to his you know club wanting to get rid of him so much 70 million on top I mean that's you're looking at about 130 plus million from Golo Kante which for me, N'Golo Kante is still a £150 million player. Purely because he's so good at what he does. He's the world's best interceptor. But you know what? N'Golo Kante is not that young anymore. I think he's 28, going on 29. I know he's, you feel like his engine will go on forever. But remember, he's had a few bad injuries recently. Recurring injuries. And he's going to touch 30 sooner rather than later. So if a club comes in and says 150 million for this kind of player, it does make you think. I'm a massive N'Golo Kante fan, and while Chelsea are doing this rebuild with Frank Lampard, I don't think they should get rid of him. He's so, so important. But it does make you think when that much money is being offered for a player that's probably seen his best days. He's the Remember, he's not like a Perlo Kante, do you? Someone who sits back and uses his amazing vision and passing skills and can go on forever. He is someone who relies on physicality and endurance, constantly running, constantly tackling. That grinds you down. He's done that at the highest level for a few years now. Like I said, pushing 30, starting to get injuries. Someone comes in for 150 million. Maybe Chelsea can start training up players like Ampadu. They've still got Kovacic. I'm just saying, it does make you think. I don't want to sell um, Kante, but it does make you think, right? Ultimately, though, this is a no for me because... Bale himself has injury problems, he's too old as well man, it'd be a bit different if he was a bit younger and as much as it would be funny to laugh at Tottenham when you know you have Bale scoring against them, it's not worth it, it'll be a waste of money, his wage demands will be too big and for me it's a no. But if Gareth Bale is a little bit too old, what if you had a Galactico player a little bit younger say in his mid late 20s? Enter Neymar into the conversation. Neymar Jr. is another one of these players that have been linked to Chelsea a couple of times over the last few years. It doesn't seem like an obvious destination for him and obviously, given the choice, he wants the return to Barcelona. But should that move not materialise, he probably would want the move to Real Madrid. But you know, they've got Eden Hazard now, it would be hard to accommodate both of them. Really, I'm not sure I can see it happening. I mean, to be honest, it's those two clubs are more likely than a Premier League club, but it has been said he would like to try and play in the Premier League. I personally think he would get physically battered in the Premier League. He's an absolute world-class talent, but, you know, he doesn't like physicality at the best of times, and can you imagine Neymar going away to Turf Moor on a wet and windy day, getting battered by Sean Dyche's men? Now, that is a lovely... <laughs> <laughs> prospect to think of, not because I want to see the guy hurt, it's just worlds collide isn't it, Sean Dyche's big hairy ass centre backs going up against Neymar in the box and just slamming him in the pouring icy cold rain of Turf Moor. But you know every superstar player recognises the Premier League is the best league in the world, they might not think it's the best teams in the world if you look at Real Madrid and Barca, but it's the best league in the world, they know the most money's there and you get loads of wages and loads of good players. In terms of top to bottom, you've got the best players, maybe not the very, very best, but you know what I mean. There isn't a lure to the Premier League, plus you can be like, you know, unlike Messi, I did something like Ronaldo, I went to two other leagues. So there's sort of kudos in that, I guess. Again, in theory, Chelsea could afford Neymar. If they secure Champions League football, if it looks like they're playing good football, they've got the saved up cash. Um, so, you know, PSG will be like, right, Chelsea can pay up, you know, we, we know they've got the cash. Neymar will look at Chelsea like, oh, they're playing in the Champions League, oh, they've got a really young coach who used to score loads of goals, they look like, quite fun, they're playing attacking football, London, West London, you know, he likes living in Paris for a bit, I'd like to live in West London for a bit, maybe it could materialise. Should Chelsea do this? In my opinion, absolutely not. Apart from my personal opinion on Neymar of him being quite toxic and problematic in many, many ways, this is a bad move for Chelsea as well. Both these players and Gareth Bale and Neymar Jr. both come with a whole host of problems. Firstly, financially very, very draining on the club. They'll both demand, I don't know, best part of half a million a week, which is just loads of money. 
Neither of them, I mean, both of them will score a lot of goals, but you, someone like Gareth Bale, he might be injured half the time. Neymar, again, he has had recent injury problems. It's just a huge, huge risk. But above all of that, the main issue with this is it puts Frank Lampard's project under threat. Lampard is playing with a youthful, well, not just exclusively youthful, but a meritocracy where any player who's doing well in training and has the right attitude plays. It doesn't matter if you're a big money signing. It doesn't matter if you're a kid from the academy who's 17. You're all equal and you all get the chance. Now, that rule comes under threat if you have a £500,000 a week <laughs> superstar Galactico on who the club need you to be playing week in, week out for their own marketing purposes. That puts everything Frank Lampard is doing under threat um, in terms of his general project, but also the harmony throughout the squad. These kids that feel like there's a new dawn at Chelsea, again, all that comes under threat. If you haven't seen the video I did on Jadon Sancho and why he might want the Chelsea move, for me, this is the most realistic sort of near Galactico big money signing that Chelsea should go for. He's a 19 year old English kid who's quite humble, hardworking and professional and plays with most important, played with most of Chelsea kids in youth level for England, you know, growing up. So there's already a connectivity there chemistry and a harmony and he's the right age and has the right attitude and really he's the right player profile for Chelsea moving forward. That would be a smart way for Chelsea to spend the funds they've got saved up in the summer or when the ban is lifted. These superstar Galactico players like Bale and Neymar, to be honest, they're, well, certainly Bale's probably the wrong side of the bell curve now and would be too much money and is injured. Neymar, for the talent he is, he's problematic for a load of reasons and no Whatever his next move is, it's going to be box office and it would certainly bring a lot of press to Chelsea if he ended up in West London. For me, it would put the whole positive feel-good factor under threat and that is too much of a big problem for Chelsea. What do you guys think? Get down in the comments and express your thoughts and opinions on this video and also talk about who do you think Chelsea should go for when the ban is lifted or do you think they should touch no one and continue nurturing what is a very positive project. A reminder also to join the Football Therapy Discord server to chat with myself and other members of the GOAT gang in the Discord chat. It's a lot of fun, 24 hours, the conversation never stops. Link is in the description below. It's via Patreon, it costs $1. Loads of fun, come join us. Also, follow me on uh, Instagram and Twitter, at Football Yannick. That's on Instagram and Twitter, at Football Yannick. Like the video if you've enjoyed it guys. I'm out. Enjoy the football. I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick. Got a muzzle. Yo chick like to guzzle. Bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry I don't. I love me baby.